What's up guys, Matthew Monas here, and today we're reviewing the Lenovo Yoga 920. This is Lenovo's latest update to their Yoga 920. It comes with the latest Intel 8th generation processors, and unlike other Ultrabooks, this one flips 360 degrees, so essentially you can use this in different positions in order to fit your lifestyle. Now, is the Yoga 920 actually worth it? Well, let's find out. The Yoga 920 manages to look super clean and classy at the same time. So you get that typical aluminum slab look on the top and bottom. You have the Yoga logo on the top left, but the biggest differentiator, the thing that really sticks out is the hinge. The hinge reminds me of a very expensive timepiece. I love the look and it's very unique. The cool thing is it can rotate up to 360 degrees. This allows you to use the pen more comfortably, which comes with the Yoga book if you buy one of the more expensive models. The pen itself is pretty fantastic. It's very accurate. It's not as good as let's say the one on the Surface Book or even the one that comes with the Apple Pencil for the iPad Pro, but more than good enough to sign contracts and to do some light sketching. In terms of ports, on the left hand side you have two USB type C ports. They also happen to be Thunderbolt 3. So you can go ahead if you really want to and hook up an external GPU and play all the latest games comfortably. There's also an audio jack to hook up headphones and on the right side you have a traditional USB 3.0 port. In terms of weight it comes in at three pounds, which is slightly heavier than the Dell XPS 13, but still in the same category as most Ultrabooks. In fact, if you had both of them in your hand, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. This means you can comfortably carry this in a bag without feeling too much weight, and it makes this laptop extremely portable. Now this can be opened up. You just remove the screws on the bottom and you can take it off and see what's inside. But once you're in there, there's not much you can really do. The RAM, the CPU is on the opposite side of the motherboard. I'm not sure if it's soldered on. And even if it wasn't, just removing all that stuff could probably fault your warranty. You have two fans on the top to remove the heat from the laptop, which by the way, does an excellent job. And you have a 68 watt hour battery, which I'll talk to you about a bit later. The display is absolutely gorgeous. It's 14 inches, has amazing color accuracy. You can get it in a 1080p version or like the one I have here, which happens to be the 4K model. The color accuracy is superb. Definitely better than the one on the Dell XPS 15 from last year. You get over 100% sRGB and about 81% Adobe RGB. Brightness was always a major problem for me with most Lenovo laptops. This one does a good job. You get about 330 nits of brightness. So when it is at max settings, things look nice and bright. Contrast ratios are nice and all the colors are very vivid. The cool thing is they all managed to do this in a very thin bezel without putting the webcam on the bottom of the display. The webcam is 720p or just regular HD. And it looks like this. There's a little bit of noise, but I mean, it's a typical front-facing webcam. None of them really stand out. They're all just good enough to like stream games or do some video conferencing. Sound is coming out as two speakers on the bottom of the laptop. They don't face towards you, which is kind of a shame, but overall the sound quality was really good. Usually the way I test is I crank the volume as loud as it can go and I listen for any distortion. None of that was present. The vocals sounded great when I was listening to music. The highs were clean. The mids had a good balance to it. And there was even a tiny little bit of bass. But if you want a bass pounding Ultrabook, you're not gonna find that here. Most likely you'll have to hook up a Bluetooth speaker or put on headphones. Another thing about the sound, this thing has far field microphone. So what that basically means is you can be across the room if you really, really want to be, and you can yell for Cortana, and this laptop is gonna pick it up. The keyboard on the 920 is pretty good. It's using Lenovo's traditional U-shaped keys, which I personally love. The travel distance is 1.3 millimeters, but I did find the key press to be a little bit mushy. There's two levels of backlighting to choose from, and you have a fingerprint scanner on the bottom right to take advantage of Windows Hello Logon. The touchpad on the other hand is not too bad. There is tons of space to move your fingers around. The gestures were fine. I just didn't find the accuracy to be the best. It's good, but it's not great. I still prefer the touchpad on the Dell XPS 13 and the Dell XPS 15. Okay, so let's talk about performance. This year we're using the eighth generation of Intel CPUs. And the biggest difference is that from last year we only got two cores, this year we get four. In fact, the first skew of processors that have hit the market are just KB Lake refresh processors. So same TDP in terms of thermal output. The biggest difference is that each core is clocked lower, but you have a higher turbo boost. And on top of that, you have two more cores to work with. So what are the benefits of having two more cores? Well, for day-to-day -day tasks like browsing the web or 
using Google Chrome or anything like that, you're not gonna see that much of a speed difference. The speed difference comes down to when you're using more intensive applications that can utilize four cores. So for example, if you're a heavy Photoshop user or if you're editing video or rendering a video, you're gonna see a 50% increase with the new eighth generation Intel processors. So great performance for everyday tasks just like last year, but even better performance for more intensive applications that can take advantage of more threads. Heat management on this laptop is fantastic. I never had any issues with thermal throttling. I put it under a bunch of CPU stress tests. The temperatures only stayed around 70 degrees Celsius, which is really good when CPU utilization is at 100. Surface temperatures were not bad either. Nothing felt hot to the touch. The surface averaged around 45 to 46 degrees Celsius after 30 minutes of being heat tested. Battery life is amazing on this thing. And that's one of the advantages you're gonna get with the eighth generation CPUs. More cores means more efficiencies, and because they're not clocked so high, things do a lot better. So for example, I was able to go about 12 hours before needing to charge. That's absolutely amazing compared to the previous generation of Yoga laptops. So that pretty much wraps up my review of the Lenovo Yoga 920. Usually when I test an Ultrabook, I always compare it to the Dell XPS 13 because I personally find it to be the gold standard of Ultrabooks. It doesn't really stand out everywhere, but it does everything pretty much right. This is pretty darn close. In fact, I think a lot of you might actually prefer this over the XPS 13 because you can write on the screen comfortably and you can rotate up to 360 degrees. I love the display, I love the design, I love the hinge, the sound is good, the hard drive speeds are absolutely amazing. Overall, it's a very solid package and I have zero issues recommending it to a friend. So that wraps up my review of the Lenovo Yoga 920. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. As always, if you love the video, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, it's free, and I'll see everybody in the next video.